Richard Harwood, perhaps, joining us later <laughs> as well. Now joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, he's the head coach of the BYU Cougars coming off of two top 100 wins. He is Mark Pope. What's up, Mark? Richard Hardwood. <laughs> I love it. He's, he's the man, right? Well, congratulations on uh, a couple of bi- big wins. Obviously, just the second win in Moraga in, in uh, BYU history. And then San Francisco, that's a team that beat BYU last year. And you go in there and get a win. So this was uh, unprecedented stuff for the Cougars. Yeah, it was it was a it was a huge trip for us. Uh, you know, you if you look at the schedule the way it turned out, we start conference on the road at Gonzaga, at St. Mary's, at San Francisco. Uh, which, you need to which, answer that. Which is not normally the way you anticipate it. You feel like the conference really got you if that's the way you start your season. Uh, but our guys responded great after a really tough loss at Gonzaga. Uh, they they had a great week last week. I'm so proud of them. Coach, after having uh, several weeks off in between games and then maybe playing one game, you finally get back to somewhat of a normal schedule with two games in a week. How good did that feel to get into that type of rhythm again? Yeah, it was good. It's it just we're so grateful to play. And, um, we, you know, I think with those three games on our belt, we feel like we're actually in conference play, right? And so we're excited about this week. we got two games coming up this week. We'll be playing at home for the first time in a month, which is so weird. And um, we're really excited about it. Playing uh, on the road versus playing at home. Obviously, playing at home has its benefits, even if there's not a crowd. But is there much of a difference this year playing at home when there's no crowd than playing on the road? Yeah, it's 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 just it's it's everything's so different, right? Um, so, you know, for us, we kind of feed off of, you know, example when we were at San Diego State. Uh, it was such an epic game. It was, you know, they were playing so great at the time, uh, uh, you know, and had their full roster. And, and uh, you know, I think they were a top 20 team at the time. And and so it was such a massive game. And there was so much intensity in the gym. Uh, after the game, you're kind of like, man, that was really fun. But could you imagine what it would have been like if the show had been in the building, right? Yeah. Because our guys really do feed off that energy and intensity of the crowd also. And it adds so much drama to the game. And so, you know, I've said this before, uh, you know, the, one of the only two games we've had fans at was at Utah State. And it was, it just was, and it was only a couple thousand fans, uh, but it just, man, it changes the experience so much. So um, it definitely makes it different. Uh, and and we we miss the fans. We miss be, being in the Marriott Center with the fans that love us, and we miss being in other gyms with the fans that hate us because it adds so much to the experience. But but with that said, you know, we're just so grateful to play. Coach, there were a lot of individual performances that we could talk about, but I want to first and foremost ask you about Gideon George. He provided such a lift in the games over the weekend on both ends, but certainly defensively. What's led to his emergence and his play over the last couple of games? Well, listen, Gideon's a special talent, uh, and he's even more than his talent. He's such a beautiful human being, uh, and he's he's actually so funny. As 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 we get to know him better, and he gets to know us better, uh, he just adds so many dimensions to our locker room and our team. Um, and he can make plays defensively that are that are really special. Now he can make plays offensively that are really different, that are different than what we do also. Um, he's every day he becomes more comfortable with our schemes and more comfortable with how we approach the game. And, you know, we think he's going to have a real ceiling, but he was crucial in this, in this, you know, during this week, obviously he made an unbelievable difference in the, in the last 10 minutes of the game, kind of managing a situation we were struggling with, uh, against St. Mary's. And then in San Francisco, he had a couple almost back-to-back series where he had a, a, a block in transition from behind that was, um, was just beyond extraordinary and follows it up uh, by making an incredibly fundamental play, taking a charge in transition. And um, so he's, you know, he's going to continue. Like we're going to see more and more and more of Gideon George as this season goes on, and he as he becomes more comfortable with the pace and intensity of Division One basketball, and 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 certainly with our system and how we do things. We're talking with former Columbia medical student Mark Pope here on BYU Sports Nation. (laughs) Uh, Mark, Richard Harwood, uh, Harwood, uh, Hardwood had a tremendous uh, last eight minutes, especially against San Francisco. He kind of just put the team on his back, drawing charges, blocking shots, dunking it. 
felt like the whole team fed off his energy, and he really helped uh, swing the momentum when, when you guys were down by seven or eight in that second half against San Francisco. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, there's a fun, uh, kind of a fun run in the second half where, um, you know, we went small, we went smaller than we traditionally do with this lineup. And, you know, they had been uh, monstering the post on the catch really well in the first half and the first 10 minutes of the second half. And so we went to a smaller lineup and spaced the floor a little bit and attacked that way for a couple possessions. And then they left Matt Harms by himself and Matt scored in three of five possessions uh, you know, kind of back, back to back to back. And then, um, and then, and then after all that, then you bring Rich in and throw him at, at him. And I just think for an opponent is so frustrating and, and Rich, you know, makes an impact on both sides of the ball so quickly and physically, uh, you know, sometimes it seems like he runs through nine guys to get to an offensive rebound. And by the time he comes up with it, all nine guys are laying on the floor having been bowled over <laughs> and Rich is standing there alone to put the put the ball back in the hoop. And um, you know, he's also so good on the defensive end in terms of his rim protection and being able to take charges and move his feet. And he, he was awesome in both games. Coach, in the last segment, Jeremy and I were discussing uh, this year's team versus last year's team through 14 games. And I realize, obviously, it's different personnel. And last year's team through 14 games is still in non-conference. But we were trying to compare and see where these teams really matched up against each other. How, how would you compare this year versus last year through 14 games? And is there a chance maybe this team actually is better than last year's team through 14 games? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think we're just, it's just so different, right? We're, we're just completely different ball clubs. Uh, th this team is new and new together. Uh, we still are, um, you know, we're still in the process of developing into who we can become. Um, you know, you talk about a guy like Gideon Jordan. So one, we have a lot of depth that we get to work with. And two, you're seeing guys grow every day into bigger roles, right? Um, and so this team is so dynamic in in the sense of, of the way we attack different teams could change personal ways, the way we approach it uh, depth-wise could change things, and then this incredible growth that guys are seeing individually in their ability, you know, um, uh, Caleb Lohner, uh, you know, was our worst points per possession guy offensively on the roster in the last four games. He's been the best, uh, most efficient offensive guy we've had on the team by far. And so you see that kind of growth and development and all of those things kind of um, is this kind of swirling stew of us trying to put this team together. Contrast that with last year where you're going to roll out the same guys every single game when they were healthy. And... Um, and they were just the, the only real change in dynamics there from the first game to the last game was just kind of learning our system and learning how we play and, and feeling urgency. So, um, you know, I think uh, obviously last year's team, what they did was so tremendous and it was so special. And, um, and, and they did it their own way, uh, you know, with incredible skill and being the top three-point shooting team in the country and being able to overcome some of the deficits that that roster faced. And this, this year's roster is doing it completely differently um, in terms of schematically and in terms of utilizing depth and in terms of having guys on the roster that are really, really growing immensely before our eyes and kind of all the dynamics that that, that add as the game. So I think it's hard to compare them. I think the one thing that is a constant is what made last year's team so incredibly special was their locker room. And I think, uh, Equally as important, maybe even more important to this year's team success so far and certainly in, in, in the coming games is going to be how good our locker room can be. And, and so that's the one thing that's stayed exactly the same. Best locker room in America, right? There's a hashtag. There's some shirts. If you make it a shirt, it's a real thing, right? Um, okay, Mark, if you shut your phone off for an hour, how many missed calls are you getting typically? You hear a beep in the background. I'm sorry, guys. Can you hear it? I got it. I got it. I got to mute it. Uh, <laughs> no, you're. You good. know, I get a lot of I get a lot of texts. Of people complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what do they have to complain about? Eleven and three right now. Which brings me to this, Mark. <laughs> you played 14 games. You haven't missed a single game due to any COVID issues. Obviously, you've had 
issues like everyone else has, but it hasn't prevented guys from playing games. How has this team been able to navigate that to be able to play 14? Yeah, we've been really fortunate. I, I mean, listen, you know, f first of all, my guys are being really diligent in, um, in trying to follow all the protocols they can. And, uh, and, you know, so they, they you know, they, they're kind of leading a little bit of private lives right now, trying to be as careful as they can for their team. And beyond that, you just also have to be fortunate, right? We've been really fortunate because you, because we've seen over and over and over again, you can do everything right and still, and still, you know, test positive and, and have a setback. So um, it's been a combination of the two of the guys doing the best they can. And then us being really fortunate as we move forward. What are the challenges with this week's games uh, against Portland and Pepperdine? So, yeah, so both teams uh, really push the ball in transition. Uh, both teams play lineups where they shoot it one through five. Uh, both teams really, really space the floor. So they have some similarities. Um, Pepperdine has six, significantly more size than San Francisco right now. Both teams are really, really well coached. Um, and it's going to feel much different than it, it, than it felt uh, this past week. Uh, completely different style where, where transition and spacing the floor are such key ingredients to what these teams do. Um, we'll face much different defensive schemes too. There were some similarities between uh, St. Mary's and, and, and uh, San Francisco in terms of both of them being elite teams in terms of taking away your assist game. They're going to make you play a little bit more in isolation. Both teams really, really focus on guarding the three-point line and taking away the three. Uh, Pepperdine and, and Portland approach it differently defensively. They have different defensive focus and different defensive strengths. So uh, it's, it's a huge week for us. You know, Portland uh, already has beat Oregon State this year, had a, a great win again, against Oregon State. Um, Pepperdine... Uh, you know, rolled into this season. They've had a little bit of disappointment and a little bit of COVID issues, uh, but they started the season um, as, you know, as a team that everybody was thinking would finish in the top three in this league, at least the top four. Uh, they, they have two um, guys right now that everybody think have the potential to be big time pros uh, in Kobe Ross, who, you know, um, is, is put up, ridiculous numbers in his entire career and and Kessler Edwards who you know it looks every bit the part of being an NBA basketball player um, as his career continues and, uh, and and so they're both really dangerous and, and we're gonna have to play great basketball to compete well Mark we appreciate the time we know you're a busy dude you're getting ready for uh, Portland then Pepperdine not once but twice which will be fun Saturday then next Wednesday so uh, we appreciate the time and we'll see you tomorrow on the Pope show appreciate you guys